Finally decided to pay for one of these Ask Your Mechanic services. He thinks it to be camshaft bearings. And the guy was right. There is an exhaust cam bearing. Uh, it's literally right at where the oil comes in to go to the exhaust cam actuator. This is essentially part of the bearing. There is a bottom half. Welcome back to another episode of Broken Mirror, guys. Today is gonna be a little different. I've decided I'm gonna take a break from the Kia for a minute. Maybe I'll get back to it by the end of the episode. But I really need to show the Mrs. Car some love. So we got this big thing in here today. It's amazing how much room this thing takes up in the garage like look how much longer it is than the Audi here stops the Audi and back here stops the Dodge Isn't that crazy anyway the car I noticed was having a little trouble shifting if you know about Dodges you know that that's not uncommon for a Dodge transmission but I've already done a little service on this probably in one of the episodes almost a year back I did transmission fluid on this at the time I didn't have the appropriate measuring stick so I kind of felt it would probably need to get done again soon and I just kind of want to keep up with it around every 20,000 miles crazily enough we probably hit right around 20,000 since then I think we did it at 132 and it's about 151 somewhere in there right now yeah we've just done a lot of trips a lot of road trips going to LA and back and Palm Springs and stuff so it is the daily driver if we take the nice car it's her car so we use this the most anyway today I want to do an oil change started hearing a little bit of lifter noise I realized I was neglecting this and I've been needing to do an oil change so just did the seafoam treatment I figured I wouldn't show you that just because there wasn't much to see quieted up the noise now I want to change the oil drop the transmission fluid do that and then later on I might get into some more stuff that needs to be done on it but that is the very basis that I need to start with so I'm gonna get after it see you guys in a bit All right, guys, just went and took the car for a test drive. Drives pretty good. I always get so weirded out when doing transmission fluid because I hear the transmission, but it's not loud. It's not like it's crazy whining, but in my head it is because I can hear it. It always messes with me. Anyway, the missus needs to take this out to run some errands. So I am going to rotate the tires quick and then probably pull this thing out for the night. But it is driving better. Sounds a lot better. Probably gonna need to do the transmission fluid again. Probably another 20, 30,000 miles. I just realized it was 30,000 miles since the last transmission fluid change so feeling a little better about that and that little dipstick that i had came in handy these don't come with dipsticks anymore or at least not the dodges so you have to order it offline and through amazon but came in handy it gives you like a little chart and kind of where it should be worked out great anyway i want to rotate the tires quick and then let her go on her merry way so i'm gonna get after it see you in a bit
All right, guys, it's the next day. The Mrs. Car is running good, driving good. I don't know if I told you guys, I think maybe I mentioned it, but I ended up speaking with one of these like just answer or ask your mechanic things online just because I could not find information anymore about this engine, about this code. I've literally read every form relating to the 2.0 in Kias and Hondas for P0014 and almost everyone does not answer or they get to the point of just replacing the engine by factory recall. Unfortunately, Fortes were not covered under the 2.0 recall. Almost every other car was, just not the Fortes. And I'm guessing that's probably because this is probably the most highly sold car they have. So they probably got away with doing all the rest and leaving out their low priced model. I'm assuming. Anyway, finally decided to pay for one of these Ask Your Mechanic services and actually learned a little bit. The guy kind of taught me about how to test and back probe. And the good news is, is the solenoids and the actuators work. Uh, if I ground out the solenoids turns the actuator the engine starts running faster on both the intake and exhaust side so they 100 work and i wish i had known how to do that in the beginning but it is what it is the last thing he said is if it's none of the things we've mentioned he assumes at this point the last answer is either an ecu reprogramming which i still kind of find to be kind of a bs answer just because why would they need to be reprogrammed if it worked the first hundred thousand miles what's changed maybe the timing chain possibly there is what I've seen to be a relearn procedure, but it is for the newer Kias. So I don't know if that works on the older models. I'm still probably going to try it down the line. If it's not what he thinks it to be last, which is camshaft bearings. As far as I've ever known, there's never been camshaft bearings. This was totally new to me. When I rebuilt the head on the Audi, I never saw any type of bearings. It was just straight through caps on the cams into the head. Actually, the head separated the secondary piece that then you put the cams on, then you put the caps on. I thought maybe that was the case here, uh, but then searching, it does turn out to be some camshaft bearings for the Hondas and Kias, but still what I see on the 2.0s is there isn't any, and I'm still pretty confident that I'm right in that. With that said, I do want to test the theory because what do I lose? I've gone this far. I've taken this engine apart three times almost now. I might as well yank off the valve cover and just see if I pull a couple caps if I see the results of a bearing somewhere. My thoughts are if there is one, there might be one on the bottom of these areas right near the actuator or on the tops of the caps for the camshaft. His idea was these things can get corroded. It can back up, create oil pressure issues. Uh, he recommended I check the screen in the block if I have to in the end. And I kind of said to him, well, if the screen was bad now wouldn't I be getting issues on my intake side as well to which he said you could have had a problem but after the cleansers maybe there was previous damage when it did get clogged on the bearings I say bearings like this so we'll see right now my goal is to rip off the valve cover pull off some caps kind of see if there is anything to do with that in this engine we'll see I'm gonna get after it see you in a bit I was proven wrong and I'm happy that I was. It was funny because I was just about to mention in the last clip how a lot of mechanics have egos and think that they're right and that they know what they're talking about. But then a lot of times it turns out they don't really know what they're talking about. They're just kind of overexcited about what they already know about something else. And turns out I was that person in this scenario and the guy was right. There is an exhaust cam bearing. Uh, it's literally right at where the oil comes in to go to the exhaust cam actuator. So I think I showed you guys, but just in case, this is essentially part of the bearing. There is a bottom half and looking at it, it does appear that someone might have sanded it down and tried to smooth out some edges. And if I put my nail here, I can feel, I mean, you might be able to hear that little ridge. 
Don't think you're supposed to be able to hear that. Do I think that's enough for the oil pressure issue? I still don't think that's enough. It is something, it has been messed with. There is a groove. So there could be potential damage on here that needs to be solved. If you look right here, there's a little, almost looks like a sanded edge to this bearing, probably about uh, about an eighth of an inch long from just where my nail starts right here to the edge. That's all sanded down. And from what I understand with oil and pressure at 70 PSI, I mean, that's enough to start spitting out the sides. The other edge doesn't appear to have that same effect. So this right here alone, I think could cause the issue. I'm not positive, but definitely think it's a possibility. But for right now, that's kind of it for the Kia, because there's nothing else I can do. I just kind of got to wait. I don't know. I'm still kind of confused if this is actually the problem, but there is definitely some wear and tear on it. Still think there might be something else. So I'm probably gonna do a little research later on and try to figure out if I can test the cam angle sensors and if the combination of replacing this and the cam angle sensor might finally get it to act right. For right now, what I want to do is start cleaning out this engine bay a little bit. I want to get this thing running, get it out of the garage. So once all this is done, it can just leave, get registered, put in my name and become my daily driver. With that said, when I had this car stored over in the spot of the old house, you can see some mice got in here and made a giant nest in this thing. And it's underneath the battery. It's kind of everywhere. And I'm going to need to get in there to do some work uh, replacing the thermostat. And the other thing I want to do is I want to find out what transmission this is. I know I've been doing a lot of transmission fluid lately. When I tried to move this car in here, I could barely get up the little hill that's out front. So if you guys always see me back the car to the garage, that incline, this car would barely get up. So it's slipping pretty bad. I don't know if it's savable anymore, but it's worth it to try to throw a filter on it, throw 40, 50 bucks worth of fluid in it and see if I can get it to act a little better. This car definitely wasn't maintained. Fortunately enough, I think the engine is pretty good. If I do my seafoam trick probably a couple times over the next few oil changes, I think it'll really bring it up to par. Uh, it does feel strong there. Transmission, not so much. So hopefully a good cleaning. Uh, as far as I know, these are supposed to be sealed transmissions. Like you're not supposed to change stuff on them as far as I know, but I am going to try to clean up everything, see if there's something I can get to try to fix. And then in the meantime, I might install the headlights back on here. Depends if they're going to end up getting in the way or not. I'm going to get after it. See you in a bit. Okay, I'm sure some of that probably got a little boring wondering what I was vacuuming up and how much. So I figured I would show you. Look at all that. So that is all kind of like acorns, if you're not from here. Similar style, but they fall out of a palm tree. And when I first went to jump this car to take off and bring it here, a little field mouse literally ran across the top of the air inbox. It was kind of hysterical. It was like a scene out of Ratatouille. I found it quite amusing. But luckily with all the vacuuming, I discovered which transmission filter I have, which is a top mount. I might also have a side mount. I don't think so. I think it's only the top if that exists. I'll have to do a little research. But the other thing I discovered, and I don't know if you can see it here, but basically right behind this wire in the back, there's another little hose. You can see going into that metal piece right there. And that hose is kind of destroyed and is causing an oil leak. So luckily I found a major oil leak by cleaning this mess up or having to clean it up. The other thing I found out is I think this might need a valve cover or it might need to have a gasket for this EVAP area. I know those gaskets kind of go out as well. And last but not least, I found out probably why the transmission was having issues that's not black that's grime so the whole bottom of the transmission is covered in some type of grime and transmission fluid good news bad news I now have a shopping list I now know where the transmission filter is I now know where one of the major oil leaks is so a bunch of good news the only bad news I don't know if I'm actually gonna be able to fix the transmission it was slipping pretty bad so hopefully some transmission fluid filled up will actually make it work hopefully some of those filters but if it needs some clutches I might need to just replace the whole thing. Maybe it'll be a valve body, but what I want to move on to right now
now is actually fixing the front bumper. So if you don't remember or you're new to the channel, uh, a long time ago, right before I bought the VW van, I was fixing the front bumper to this and then I got a text about the van and I dropped everything I was doing and I went and bought the van on the spot and then just kind of the rest is history and I have not touched the front bumper since. So if I remember right, there's a little bit of plastic welding left that we have to do on the front bumper and then hopefully maybe we can actually mount it if it makes sense. If it doesn't make sense for me to mount it right now, I might hold off, but hopefully I can. Anyway, regardless, I'm gonna grab the front bumper and start cracking away at it. more than I remember, but I was able to get it all done. The only thing I'm missing is one of the turn signals that go in the bumper. And I'm pretty sure that I have it somewhere around, almost positive I found it and I can reattach it. That or it might have fallen off on the way here. I don't remember, uh, but it came out really good. Just wanna show you quick. This is everything I just did. You can see there's a bunch little staples in there, about three hiding under this spot. And this space, I think, what? One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11. 11 just to hold it on. And then I did this one back right when I had the van and it still came out pretty good, pretty content. So the whole bumper should mount up, but if you see what I'm talking about with the blinker that I'm missing, some reason, I don't, I don't know where it went. I gotta find it. I'm sure I'll find it. Either way, I'll just add it to the shopping list. But I do think that is gonna wrap up this episode of Broke Mirror, guys. I did put this video right here. This is the van and the first welding video of the front bumper. Should be pretty good. But until next time, I hope you have a wonderful rest of your week and I'll see you then. Later, guys.